guys? Yugi Bros here, uh, ready to dissect what I think will be a much, uh, much needed shakeup for the format. Originally, we were kind of more thinking it was a lot more black and white that Relinquish was just going to dominate, but after further testing, we've come up with a lot of uh, counterplays, countermeasures, counter decks to uh, what we think the new meta is going to be. So, without further ado, uh, let's kick it off. Uh, up here at the top, I have Sphere, Karibo, Windstorm, and Kunai. These are the three main defensive cards that cur currently get used to basically thwart your opponent's plans and stop them from uh, attacking, mainly. Uh, Sphere, Karibo will continue to see as much play, if not more, as it always has, because Relinquish will be playing two to three of it minimum because of how it, in addition to blocking your opponent's attack, then be is able to be used as a tribute from the graveyard for Relinquish. Uh, but also because it's not a trap card. Relinquish, with the Jin uh, now being in the set as well, is unaffected by trap cards if if tr if you've tributed the Jin for the uh, ritual cost, uh, making it so that Windstorm and Kunai literally will do nothing. Um, that's huge in uh, a game where those traps basically ran it. If you watch most of my videos, most of the game becomes who can break the opponent's Windstorms and Kunais first. Uh, you're, gonna, you're basically just going to keep going back and forth until somebody... Until you whittle someone down to little to no resources, basically having those not having those trap cards, and then the actual game progresses. But now with Relinquish and the Jin, uh, you can bypass all of that. And that, in addition to its consistency with Sonic Bird, gives it a hell of an advantage going forward here um, in speed duels. Uh, because of that, I think Windstorm and Kunai definitely will see less play. I don't think they will see no play. I think Kunai will see way less play than Windstorm. Windstorm is still a force to be reckoned with in any matchup that's not relinquished. Uh, but Kunai is a lot more selective and targets, so you may not see it get played nearly as much. Uh, on that note, moving down here real quick, Ready for Intercepting, I feel, is the new powerful trap that will see a lot of play because it flips any warrior or spellcaster monster face down. And that doesn't have to be your opponent, that could be yours as well, uh, if you want to, like, unequipped something that's on a Relinquished. But because Relinquished is unaffected by traps, this is going to be problematic siding this in for that matchup, because I originally thought you definitely would side this uh, in general, because it flips the Amazons face down if they're equipped with the Heirloom, Heirloom falls off, and you bring it in and it gets Relinquished, unless it's tributed with the Jin, it too is insane in that matchup. I definitely think it will see play. I don't know if it will see as much because depending on how much Jins get mained just because of the traps in the format, Relinquish may just literally knock out all the trap cards that currently get played. Uh, the only one I could see that would still get played moving forward uh, in main or side is uh, Magic Jammer or Dust Tornado. Uh, but I think Twister still holds a shot over Dust Tornado because even though you do have to pay 500 and it has to be a face-up spell or trap card, there's no face-down spell or trap card that's currently ruling the game uh, unless you want to preemptively pop a Windstorm or a Kunai. Uh, but um, being able to pop the thing that uh, Relinquish is equipped to is still super relevant as it always was, but I think Twister gives you the knack there as just being able to do it uh, the turn you draw Twister, or during your turn in general, if you want to go off and try to seal the uh, victory over the Relinquished on your turn rather than your opponent's. Um, so I think Twister has more of an advantage there, uh, in addition to always being relevant against something like Amazons. But Dust Torino definitely may see play, but with a 5-card side deck, this is very tough. It's very tough. And what's even worse is as long as Blue Eyes consistently continues to be a deck in the game, uh, maining either one of these options is very uh, risky if you go up against that because then you just have more dead cards against a deck that already powers off turn one or turn two. You need more defensive cards and these aren't defensive enough to beat Blue Eyes. Speaking of Blue Eyes, I think Blue Eyes has a bigger chance to make a statement in this format than it did last because the only problem it could couldn't deal with the last format was Amazons, but Blue Eyes gets two buffs in the sense that Relinquish is a buff to Blue Eyes because Lord of D makes it so that their Relinquish can't target your Blue Eyes. So if you could protect Lord of D or better protect Lord of D than you used to be able to, uh, this deck is a really good matchup against Relinquished. Uh, and in addition, against Amazon, they can now side Warrior Elimination. The one problem Blue Eyes always had was uh, Swordswoman in the Amazon matchup. But with Warrior Elimination now, destroy all warrior monsters on the field, that just straight gets rid of all their Amazons. 
Uh, if they have village, yeah, it's a little tedious because they'll replace it with one, but usually in combination with Stamic Destruction, you can wipe out your opponent's board in one shot with something like Warrior Elimination, Sided, and Blue Eyes for the Amazon matchup. In addition, however, uh, Dragon's Rebirth, which hasn't seen any play in Blue Eyes thus far, may become a staple and a, a way to play Blue Eyes a little more defensively than you used to. Uh, I would consider, if you're playing 2 Sphere Curbo, to bump it up to 3 in Blue Eyes just because of Relinquish. Uh, and obviously the trap doesn't help, but the upside to Dragon's Rebirth is that you target a dragon you control, banish it, and summon one from your hand or graveyard, a different dragon. Um, the upside to this is if the Relinquish tries to target your Blue Eyes, for example, and you chain Dragon's Rebirth, banishing the targeted Blue Eyes for, let's say, a different Blue Eyes, or a Tyrant Dragon, or something of that sense, uh, they lose their chance to absorb the monster and now you have a beefy fresh summoned monster that can go in for massive damage relinquish is going to play a lot less defensive cards than they used to because they don't need to anymore they have the consistency between senju and sonic bird so now if you could take full advantage of the fact that they're not going to have enough defense to deal with you dragons or birth might be the way to go and play blue eyes in the future uh, as well as siding worry elimination for the amazon matchup uh, so I don't think that deck is gone by any stretch of the imagination. I think it'll be very interesting to see where that goes in the future. Uh, tying in here, though, back to Amazons. I don't think Amazons versus Relinquish as, is as one-sided as we originally thought. While Relinquished has a huge upside of taking their monster and making it so the heirlooms are relevant, the villages are relevant, whatever, and the traps are irrelevant, uh, if Amazons can put up enough monsters with village to that where Relinquish will absorb one, but then they can't get over the other ones, they have a problem. Sonic Bird and Senju are 1400 both respectively. That's not going to get over any of the Amazons that are on the field with the village. And because of that, Relinquish then struggles to capitalize off absorbing the monster if there are multiple Amazons on the field. If you take one and they only had one on board there, you're fine. But if they have multiple and you take one, nothing really changes. You still have to deal with a wall of Amazons, and you can't really do that with a Relinquish that's not getting buffed from the village like the Amazons on the opposing side of the field. So now you have a problem of getting over things. And because, again, it has less space for defensive cards, that's going to make the offense in Relinquish a lot worse, uh, because you won't have the capabilities to then get over said monsters. Uh, on that note, Relinquish also falls victim to Magic Jammer, which becomes even more of a threat than it used to be. While I don't think this card is still going to get mained, I think this card is ridiculous in the side deck because Black Illusion Ritual is the literal only way Relinquish plays its deck. Fulfillment of the Contract is the only dodge around, but I don't think they're going to play multiple of this because 800 life points is a lot steeper in 4,000 Yu-Gi-Oh than 8,000, and drawing this early does nothing for you. Late game, it lets you bring back a Relinquish, um, but Magic Jammer making it so that your big play then gets thwarted off of that is arguably bigger than negating the flute in blue eyes. While that's still an option if you're playing Jammer, blue eyes at least can still play around with its other monsters. Um, but negating black, black Illusion Ritual literally negates Relinquished. So I don't think it's as one-sided as we originally thought. On that note, the one deck that I think can main Magic Jammer and main it very effectively is Gravekeepers. Gravekeepers is probably the most control-based deck we still have in the game. On the note of you, the engine is small enough that you have the consistency to recruit with Recruiter, no pun intended, and Reborn with Rite of Spirit. So you will always have board presence, um, and that way you have the ability to then play more traps than you normally play, and by traps, I don't specifically mean Windstorm and Kunai, because that's not going to do anything Relinquish, but I mean more things to just stop Relinquish in its tracks, like Magic Jammer, Twister, Dust Rando, etc. Uh, so I think Gravekeepers moving forward will still be a good consistency deck. I don't think it'll be a meta deck. I could be wrong, but I think it definitely has the advantage of having extra space to then play other cards to deal with whatever is specifically being played in the meta. On that note, I think Harpies can shake things up. It's a it's a bit of a stretch, but I think Harpies in the last game in the last format had no place because if you could consistently get Harpies to pop Amazon's cards, you might have had the advantage, but there's not enough Harpies to play a com consistent Harpy deck. Uh, we don't have any other Harpy monsters. One, two, and three, you can only max uh, one copy of each if you were going to play each one. Uh, they're all treated as Harpy Lady. And we all usually play a number one just for the extra 300 boost. 
However, I don't think that's bad. I think you could still play a deck of that, maybe one sisters, and if you could throw Desert Twister in there, even if it's not the Amazon as the engine, if you could throw some type of mini earth engine in, uh, you could have this deck that literally just pops off back row after pops off back row. Uh, Tribal Twister had the downside of not being able to really main the Harpy's Hunting Ground because it was very inconsistent as to where you'd hit the Harpy and that card would be dead most of the time. But if you can make the deck more Harpy based, maybe you'd kill the Amazons for it. Or you could side Sage because that still does what the Harpy deck would do, which is pop back row. Uh, I think that would be very good against Relinquish because it has the uh, the upside again of having monsters that will be boosted on your field but not boosted if they're equipped to relinquish so you'll always be stronger than relinquished and as an added bonus you can pop relinquish's back row the only thing you gotta watch out for at that point is relinquish having sphere karibo but i think that's fine i think that is okay that's a good trade uh then obviously just don't let relinquish absorb it does a twister because then you got a whole another problem on your hands but um, if Harpies can make itself consistent in this format, I think it's a lot better positioned than it used to be. And lastly, I want to talk about Water. Water has this ultimate super powerful mega card called Levia Dragon Daedalus that says if it sends Yumi, you control to the grave, you pop all cards on the field other than this card. This is insane. This is how you wipe Blue Eyes, Amazon, and Relinquish all in one shot. None of them can do anything to stop this. Uh, there's nothing that negates monster effects as of yet that I could think of, uh, and the only way to stop this from happening is negating Yumi with Magic Jammer or something or popping it before the Levia gets to pop it. It's very flawed in the fact that Levia has to pop this one card that can get popped by so many ways that we have to destroy spawn drops in this game, but Levia by himself is 2600, so that's getting over most things as it is. Uh, the water deck is a blur to me. I thought originally it was literally going to be the best next to Relinquished, but after testing it I realized the consistency is terrible. Uh, you have to arguably play the skill World's Greatest Fisherman to get any type of consistency going with the deck, and even then paying the 500 each turn in 4000 Yu-Gi-Oh makes it so that you're going to lose a life in this deck very fast. This deck already doesn't have a lot of defense because Slushy is a 0-0, and if Slushy is your game plan, you can't leave that on the field to, your fir to have your opponent just destroy. You're going to lose too much life points to then where the 500s are relevant. Uh, but you can't play too many defensive cards because the whole point of the deck right now between Fishboard Planter and Imiruka is milling the waters from your deck to the grave, and if you don't have enough waters, you're going to mill non-water cards and get none of these effects to go off consistently. So there's a bit of a problem with water in that I don't know if it can get to a point where it can be consistent enough, but I do like that Konami has it, so you have to implement the normal monsters if you want to use this skill to add Levia back to your hand, for example, like Big Wave, Small Wave, so you could summon it right to the field if you're playing around the slushy combo. It's interesting. I hope they get more support in the future. I just don't think this set is going to be what pushes it over the edge. But there is always the option of having the perfect hand opening the way to summon the Levia off the big wave, small wave, activating the Yumi and popping the opponent's board. So, never say never, I guess. The last things I wanted to talk about are down in the side deck here. I think Half Shut will kind of be rotated out this format. I don't think it's going to see a lot of play, unless Amazons can continue being the force that it has been. Uh, in which case, only if Blue Eyes ends up being as insane as I think it might be because of Relinquished. Otherwise, I don't see Half Shut being played at all. Trap Jammer, arguably the same thing. It's not that Relinquish doesn't need to play it because it's already unaffected by traps. You're going to see a lot less traps be played because of this. But in matchups that aren't Relinquished, where you think you might need it for a mirror match or something, Trap Jammer might see the play, but I do think it will see a lot less. Guild for the Lightning is an interesting card because popping all monsters your opponent controls, as I've said already in this video multiple times, is very powerful. Uh, getting three monsters on the field is very inconsistent unless you're A, playing Blue Eyes, or B, in my opinion, playing Gravekeepers. Um, but throwing a Guilford in at the most awkward situation, especially when you dead draw, it doesn't seem as ideal as it could be, so I don't know how this card will be going forward. Blade Knight's a really cool option. I don't know where it'll see consistency, and I don't know if anyone's going to flat out main it in the beginning, uh, but having the effect to uh, negate Flip effect monsters it destroys in battle is cute, but again, I don't think we're going to be dealing with flip effect monsters right now. I don't think that's going to be a thing. Great Phantom Thief. Great Phantom... Great, holy crap. <sighs> Great Phantom Thief is an interesting option. Uh, it's an Earth, so you could throw this into that Harpy deck, though I don't think that's the best Earth to choose. 
Uh, but declaring a card when it inflicts battle damage to your opponent uh, and seeing their hand and then discarding all copies of that card, I think has the most usability against Relinquished because whatever they add doesn't always get summoned right away. Uh, but this card is slow, really weak, and definitely has no place in this current format, so I don't see how that'll really be relevant. Same goes for Theban Nightmare. This is a card that I always think has potential, but the problem is, I don't know where you're going to put it. Uh, you have to have no cards in your hand or spell, no spell card and trap cards in your spell and trap zones. This is basically one of those top decks summoned for 3,000, uh, but again, I don't know really where you're going to play it. Legendary Fisherman, I have it on this list because it has its own skill. Catch of the Day is the fifth skill. I didn't have it in the last video because we didn't know it at this point. Uh, if you control Legendary Fisherman, you can activate Yumi directly from your deck or graveyard. That's pretty powerful. However, that's once per duel. Uh, but if the Yumi dies, I mean, that gives you that back. And what's cool about this is this doesn't sit in the field, so you can play around it. And then once while Legendary Fisherman you control, destroys the monster by battle or inflicts battle damage to your opponent. They're really trying to get this effect to go off. You could special summon a level 4 or lower water monster from your deck or grave in defense. Also very powerful. Uh, I haven't tested with this yet. I have no idea whether this is consistent or not. But I do like that you can put the Yumi from your deck or graveyard onto the field. So I'm glad it says grave as well so you don't have to main multiple copies of Yumi and just brick with the card really badly. Uh, but I have no idea whether this will be actually consistent or not. The Legendary Fisherman is level 5, and without Legendary Ocean or something of that nature in this game, and no cost down to me doesn't count, I don't think this is going to be very powerful. But I could be wrong, and I could be completely wrong about cost down. Let's find out. Uh, ready for Intercepting. Uh, I've brought it up already. I think this card's good. I just don't know how it's going to fare in a, a format where a monster is unaffected by trap cards. Forceful Checkpoint, a lot of people want me to talk about this. I don't know where to stand on this card yet. This card could be really good, this card could be really bad. I think when this came out in regular Yu-Gi-Oh! as a secret rare, I thought that was the worst secret rare they arguably printed ever, uh, next to Edo the Supreme Magical Force. I don't know if I'm still correct about that or not, but I've never seen this card get played competitively in regular Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't really know if it's going to get played competitively in this game, but I definitely think it could, especially if your opponent has Fear Karibo in their hand. So. Uh, and then lastly, I wanted to talk about Zombies. Zombies isn't going to be good this set. I don't think it gets any better. I think the Ecto build that I built for uh, last format doesn't get anything out of this format, even though there are Zombie cards in Pyramid of Wonders and Zombina. I don't think anything in that deck gets pumped. Goblin Zombie doesn't do a thing for that deck, so I'm not even going to mention it outside of right now. The only thing that card is good for is King of the Skull Servants. I think King of the Skull Servants will still be consistent after set 3. I think that deck will be a lot po more powerful, even though we only know about Book of Life so far. I think Skull Servants is definitely something to be revered uh, moving forward. So I definitely would hold on to your zombie support. I wouldn't move your zombie support. Don't dump this stuff. In two months, this deck might be one of the best decks in Speed Duels. I could be wrong, but it looks like they're gearing towards giving Bones more skill stuff, more zombies, and more things to come. And I'm just going to point to this Night Beam real quick. You know, this, this might be the card that, you know boosts out uh dust tornado and, and uh it's twister but until then you know maybe it, yeah i don't know we'll, we'll talk about it some other time anyways guys <laughs> that's uh that's all for me uh i know this video has been a very very long video but i wanted to talk as much as options as possible and i'm sure i haven't hit them all so on that note what did i miss tell me in the comments down below and uh, we're nearing 100 subscribers, so if and when that happens, I got a very special video for you guys as well. But as always, my name is Yugi Bros. Like, comment, subscribe. As always, share this video if you really liked my content. Check out our Patreon and Twitter in the description below. And have a great day.